Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are again talking a little bit more about the mysterious battery cell that Electric has obtained photos of. We also have a couple updated analyst notes, which I think are important to understand the perception heading into battery day, and then a little bit more on European Union emissions. Relatively quieter day for Tesla stock today, finishing down 1.8% to $441.76. That compared to the NASDAQ, down 1.25%. All right, so starting off with the battery news, as we talked about yesterday, Electrek had posted on Twitter about a couple of photos that they had received, claiming to be Tesla's new battery cell from the Roadrunner production line. Today, Electrek did end up writing an article about that. In that article, they write, quote, an anonymous source sent Electrek two pictures of a battery cell claiming that they were Tesla's new in-house cell, adding, quote, another independent source was able to confirm to Electrek that this is indeed one of Tesla's own battery cells produced with the Roadrunner system, end quote. So obviously take that for what it's worth, but this does fit with the rumors that we have heard so far leading up to battery day. So my personal guess is this is probably accurate. And even if it's not, this is the direction we expect Tesla to be heading in. Anyway, larger cells likely with a tabless design. We've talked about that tabless design and the advantages that it gives a couple of times back in May, back in August. Most recently was the August 27th episode. So I'm not gonna go into as much detail because again, that would be redundant. But if you missed that previously, you can start that conversation at the 1 minute 39 second timestamp of the August 27th episode, which will be linked on screen and in the show notes. To summarize the takeaways of those conversations though, and specifically as it relates to this larger potential cell design, there should be a number of different advantages to that larger size, specifically increased energy density at the pack level. I think this part is relatively intuitive. If you have a battery cell, of course, it has a casing. So the smaller the cells in the pack are, the more casings you're going to need in that pack. That's not an active ingredient, so that casing is going to effectively lower your energy density at the pack level. The other huge advantage of a larger cell should be easier manufacturability. If that larger cell has two, three, four times, whatever, the amount of energy capacity as a smaller cell, then it obviously follows that you only need to produce a half or a third or a fourth as many battery cells for the same amount of energy capacity. That should increase production rates and lower cost. The problem with those larger cells tends to be that because there is more material in them, the electrons have to travel a greater amount of distance, which generates more heat. That greater amount of heat results in a couple things. You have power loss from the waste heat, and if the temperature becomes excessive, that can cause life cycle issues or obviously in a worst case, a cell fire. So that larger cell may require more active cooling, which could eventually defeat the purpose of doing that larger cell in the first place. So as always with anything battery related, you're always trying to balance the trade-offs of these factors or find changes in the chemistry or the design that can offset some of those impacts. One of those changes that is expected is the tabless battery cell design, which again, that is what we've gone through a lot of detail on. Elon has addressed Tesla's patents on this saying they're more important than they sound with the major reasons being that this design should decrease the distance that those electrons have to travel, so less heat with those larger cells. It may also open up the possibility of sustaining a higher rate of charge for a longer period of time, and it should be much easier to manufacture. So pretty big things there, and that's why it's so exciting to see this potentially significantly larger cell here from Electrek. If we look really closely at the Electrek pictures, we can see a marking on the battery that indicates something something 054, which speculatively may be a dimension indicator, possibly the diameter of the cell. We know that Tesla so far has used 18650s and 2170s. Those numbers refer to the dimensions. So for 18650s, it's 18 millimeters in diameter, 65 millimeters in height. 2170s are 21 millimeters in diameter, 70 millimeters in height. If this 54 equates to the diameter, then we can do a little bit of guessing on the volume of the cell. BR Cooper on Twitter has done this, and using that diameter of 54 millimeters has estimated a height of 98 millimeters. So not having any grasp myself on how big of a size something like that was, I wanted to get a feel for it and get it in my hands. So I made myself a little paper cutout here that is 54 millimeters in diameter by 98 millimeters in height, and then took a couple of comparison shots with this paper cutout in my hand versus these electric photos. Now, if you're familiar with photography at all, you know that stuff like this is never completely accurate. The angles and the focal length of the lens can play some really significant tricks on images, but we can still get a rough idea, and to me, this feels about right. Maybe it's a bit bigger, a bit smaller, but overall, I think that 54 millimeters by 98 millimeters is probably pretty close to whatever is in this image from Electric. I think the height would be the biggest question mark. Assuming that's in the ballpark, though, we can compare the volume of this larger cell to the 2170s that are in the Model 3. So I've got all of those calculations here using the radius of 27, not the diameter of 54. 
for that larger cell, and then the radius of 10.5 for the Model 3 cell. When all that math is said and done, and we divide the volume of this larger cell by the volume of the 2170, we can see that the volume of the larger cell would be about 9.25 times the volume of the 2170. The long range pack in a Model 3, for example, uses 4,416 of those 2170 cells. Depending on the other changes to energy density, a cell of this size could mean that instead of 4,416 cells for that size of pack, Tesla may only need about 500 of a larger format cell. That's where we come back to manufacturing. If this larger cell takes Tesla even two times as long or is two times as difficult to manufacture, that's okay because they only need to manufacture about 10% as many cells as they would before to get the same energy capacity. So if it takes two times as long, but they need to manufacture only 10%, well, then you're looking at a throughput increase of about 5x. Of course, the two times harder or two times more time is just an example here. So that would be the biggest question mark in this equation. So I hope this is the sell, but we will find out next week. All right, next up, we have a couple of price target increases ahead of battery day. Deutsche Bank has increased their Tesla price target from $300 per share to $400 per share. They've maintained their hold rating. And then Credit Suisse has increased their price target also to $400 per share from 280 before they have held their neutral rating as well. We'll spend a bit more time on Credit Suisse. Their note was like 40 pages long, very in detail. Deutsche Bank was more of a quick update. They wrote, quote, We believe Tesla could unveil a new insourced manufacturing system to ramp up battery capacity, improved cell chemistry with greatly enhanced performance, and fast declining cost curve. While media and investors' expectations for the event are high, we believe these announcements could meet many of them and reinforce Tesla's position as a technology leader, end quote. So in short, they expect Tesla to introduce their own battery cells with increased energy density and manufacturability, as well as a 1 million mile battery. They also said they expect Tesla to unveil the Plaid, Model S, and X. As for Credit Suisse, they wrote, quote, We expect Battery Day to effectively be Master Plan Part 3. Tesla has talked to long-term battery capacity of 2 terawatt hours, more than 30 times its current capacity. This sharp increase supports growth in three areas, auto, stationary storage, and supply to others. Specifically in auto, battery growth underscores Tesla's ambitions of selling 20 million vehicles per year, which would make it two times the size of Toyota, the world's largest automaker, and is 40 times Tesla's volume this year. While we see this as overly aggressive, we nevertheless foresee Tesla reaching 5 million units over time, market share gains of Japanese OEMs in the US in the 1980s and 90s serves as a precedent." End quote. So I have to point out their mention of Tesla's 20 million target. Remember that was sort of the purpose of asking that question back on I think the Q1 call. And we're now slowly over time seeing that target trickle into these analyst notes and them starting to acknowledge it, which I think is a really good thing, even if they aren't necessarily going to forecast at that level, which definitely can't put any blame on anyone for not doing that. Anyway, as far as the perception around Battery Day, Credit Suisse writes, quote, While we'd expect Battery Day to highlight the potential for margin improvement, we believe the core takeaway of Battery Day will be that Tesla's growth story is solidified for the next two decades, especially as Battery Day will show that Tesla has a key lead in batteries over others, and in a market placing a premium on growth, Tesla stock is likely to remain elevated." End quote. I'm definitely excited about that part of it. One of the bare arguments is that Tesla doesn't have its own technology, they're just sourcing batteries from everybody else, and it's difficult to refute that point because Tesla keeps a lot of their battery stuff private. So while we know that Tesla has a lot of their own technology, especially in terms of the integration of the cells to the modules to the pack, it's kind of difficult to convey that with easily sourced facts, and I think Battery Day will help a lot specifically with that point. Back to Credit Suisse, under their base case assumptions, they are forecasting 1.8 million units delivered from Tesla in 2025, but really their model is sort of a mix of probabilities of a lot of different scenarios. So they have Uber Bear, Bear, Base, Bull, and Uber Bull, and then they have a probability matrix for each one of those scenarios being hit. So that mixes out to their $400 price target, but then they also have what they call a gray sky price target of $240 per share and a blue sky price target of $630 per share. But again, that's a mix of probabilities from these other cases. So really in their model, they do actually have a case, their Uber Bull case that goes up to $1,098 per share as the price target, which means that's the value that the stock should trade at today based on what it would be in 2025, either today or within the next 12 months. They do use a relatively low 5% discount rate though, Normally, 10% would be more common. Anyway, in that Uber Bull case with an almost $1,100 price target, they are forecasting 2.8 million units in 2025. Again, that compares to Tesla's target of somewhere above 
4 million. With that, they project automotive revenue of about 124 billion, battery storage and solar revenue, which a lot of analysts get knocked for not including in their models, of $20 billion, 13 billion for services, so 157 billion in total revenues. They then have a 29% gross margin on that total revenue, operating expenses between nine and 10 billion, and that gives them an earnings per share of about $35 per share, which they then apply a 40 times multiple on. So if that situation came to fruition, Credit Suisse is saying that this year, a fair price for Tesla would be $1,098 per share, which by the way, equates to a market cap of just over $1 trillion. So I think depending on how autonomy shakes out, they might be a bit high on their margin forecasts, but at 2.8 million vehicles in 2025 as their Uber bull case, I think that leaves some room for upside versus Tesla's targets. All right, last story today, as we had talked about last week, the European Union is considering raising their emissions requirements heading into 2030. We have news today that the European Commission president has proposed increasing the emission reduction requirement from the 1990 base from the previously targeted 40% reduction to a new 55% reduction by 2030. From what I understand, this is likely to be supported, though we'll keep an eye on it. But if this does go through, that would of course likely mean stricter automotive emissions requirements for automakers in Europe. Hopefully that will accelerate investment into electric vehicles for these other automakers, but if it doesn't, it could also mean an acceleration of regulatory credit revenue for Tesla. So I think that's it for today. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Thursday, September 17th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.